Right, this video is going to teach you the cover-up method to solve partial fraction questions. Okay, so what is the cover-up method? Well, the cover-up method is the shortcut. Here's the shortcut to help you solve your partial fraction questions. Now, then you may ask, since it's a shortcut, why don't I teach you earlier on? I mean, why, why didn't I teach you earlier on, right? Okay, the trouble is, this method, although it's fast, has got several restrictions that you have to take note of. Okay, and therefore, um, you know, I have to teach you every single, uh, all the normal ways to do a partial fraction questions first. Okay, before teaching you the shortcut. Okay, because this shortcut is not applicable all the time. We'll talk about the restriction of this method later on. But for now, let us use this example here. Okay, this example here that we have uh, to, to try to use the cover method, to show you the cover method, how it works. Okay, now, this is a typical partial fraction question. Okay, we split up into three simpler fractions like this. And of course, uh, as we learned early on, to find the values of A, B, and C, all we have to do is to multiply throughout, flatten the equation, substitute in values of X to find A, B, to find B, and to find C. Right? So to use the carve up method, it works a little like this. Now, to find A, okay, what we do is we take a look at the denominator of A. Okay, so in this case, the denominator of A is X minus 1. So what we do to find A is we're going to substitute in X equals to 1 to the left-hand side. Now, some of you may ask, hey, wait a minute, you know, to the left-hand side, there's this denominator here, X minus 1. And if I substitute in X equals 1, I'll have 1 minus 1, which will give me 0. And 0 multiplied by anything will give me 0. So I'll end up with 1 over 0. Now, you should know that you, know, you can't really divide by 0, so it becomes undefined. So, what is going on? Okay, now there is a reason why this is called a cover method. Okay, the whole idea is, well, we know that we're going to substitute x equals to 1, and we know that we cannot substitute in this bracket because we get 0, and we don't want a 0 at the denominator, isn't it? So, what we're going to do is, we're going to cover up. Okay, we're going to cover up this factor. So we don't care. We pretend that it doesn't exist. So what we do is we substitute in x equals to 1 to the left-hand side. And we will get 1 over 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Okay, 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So we will get positive half. Okay, and this will be our a. Cool, right? Now, is this fast? <laughs> well, obviously. Okay, it's way faster than uh, what we are, uh, what we have been doing. Okay, multiplying throughout and all. Okay, so immediately, I mean, for those of you faster, uh, who can work this out mentally faster, so you can actually work this out mentally, and you can actually figure out A is equal to half very quickly. Okay, so now, how do we find B? Well, you may have guessed it, same thing. Okay, we're going to substitute in x equals to 2. How do we get that? Well, we look at the denominator of b, okay, the fraction, okay, the denominator beneath b. Alright, so we're going to substitute in x equals to 2. Alright, but to the left hand side. But this time around, we are going to cover up the x minus 2. Okay, because we know that we cannot have a, we cannot substitute in 2 into x minus 2, we get 0, isn't it? So, when we work it out, okay, to the left hand side, it becomes very easy, isn't it? I mean, 2 minus 1 is a 1, and uh, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1, so we know that we get negative 1, and this will be our value for b. Alright, so lastly, we took a look at c, and of course, now we know what to do. We just have to substitute in x equals to 3 into the left hand side and this time around we are going to cover up x minus 3 okay so when we substitute in x equals 3 to the left hand side we'll get 1 over 3 minus 1 is a 2 3 minus 2 is a 1 so again we get half so we know that c is equal to half okay and therefore now we know that the partial fractions for 1 over x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3 is equal to 1 over 2, x minus 1, minus 1 over x minus 2, plus 1 over 
2 x minus 3 so this will be the answer okay so this will be the partial fractions by the cover method now as you can see well the cover method some of you may disagree some of you may disagree that it is actually shorter okay the working wise okay uh, well again you may not like it well if you like it of course you have to know how to use it if you don't like it well it doesn't matter you can still solve it using the normal ways that we have uh, learned in example one two three now up to this point some of you may ask hey you know this cover method sounds pretty cool pretty interesting but how does it work you know how does it really work I mean why why do we substitute and so on okay I'm glad you asked okay because I mean to really understand how the cover method works is to really learn it okay so the cover method is actually nothing that mysterious one so let us take a look again this same question okay but let us not use cover method to do let us use the normal way to do what is the normal way to do well multiply throughout isn't it so we multiply throughout the left hand side will be left with a uh, I mean 1 I'm sorry uh, left hand, right hand side we have a multiplied by x minus 2 x minus 3 and we have b multiplied by x minus 1 x minus 3 and of course the c alright we we'll write it here x minus 1 x minus 2 now what we see I mean this is the basic thing that we get all the time right so what we realize is this when we substitute in x equals to 1 what happens the b disappears the c disappears we'll be left with only a okay and what exactly happened here is this all right we have all right let's say we don't substitute in for these two brackets for now but we know that we're going to substitute in when we're going to substitute in x equals to 1 the, a, the b and the c will disappear so in here we get a is equal to 1 over x minus 2 x minus 3 which is the same as when we cover up this bracket here isn't it this is our a so what how it works is this way okay this actually the same as um, the substitution method okay just substitute values of x to get rid of the b and c and find a okay the only difference is that well you don't really have to do the uh, multiplying throughout okay you don't really have to do the manual you know the, 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 the substitution manually all right so this is how the cover method works okay now earlier on I mentioned that uh, well there are certain restrictions you know for cover method okay there are certain cases that you can use cover method there are certain cases where you cannot use cover method so what are those first of all the cover method can only be used for partial fractions involving only linear factors okay only linear all right linear factors like we seen earlier on okay now but sometimes you have linear factors too but they're repeated okay now this is when you have to be extra careful all right if you want to use your cover method okay because only the fraction with the highest power of the repeated factor will be able to use the cover method okay now um, this will be more clear uh, when I show you how to do it okay in example 5 okay but for now always always remember that cover method is a shortcut okay and like all other shortcuts there are weaknesses and uh, there are cases whereby you can use them so the cover method is one of those and therefore you can only use it for linear factors and repeated linear factors